What's cracking, lacking, y'all? Uh, last week I reached out uh, to different, you know, parts of my platform or whatnot, and uh, I was like, I would like to do a Q and A deal. And I ain't gonna lie, I stole this idea from Fusty King. Sorry, my guy, but I did tell you that I was stealing it. Um, so in different places, I just asked people, hey, do y'all have any any questions for this Q&A that I'm going to do next week? And I got a bunch of questions. I'm going uh, to do about 12 of them. OK, OK, we're going to do 12 of them and we're going to see what my answers are to those questions. Let's run this for the cardio. First question from Curtis uh, on YouTube. He says uh, trade packages for Jamal Adams. Hell no. Nah. Because I just don't I, I'm not the biggest fan of giving away things to go get Jamal Adams. Now, if he's disgruntled and he don't want to play for the Jets, and he wants to play in Dallas, then let's just wait till he don't sign with the Jets, and in free agency, he can just come sign with Dallas. They're not going to trade him. Um, they said that they're not going to trade him, so cool. Let him play his time out, and when it's, when it's time for him to come to the Cowboys, we'll get him for free without giving him resources. The one thing that I don't understand is when somebody be like, yo, watch. We got one hole on this defense, one hole on this entire team. Let's fix it right now and go get Jamal Adams. I'm like, cool. All right, what you want to do? All right, I'm going to make a hole in the receiving core. We're going to trade Michael Gallup and a first-round pick, and we're going to go get Jamal Adams. No, sir, because then you're going to want to trade some pick to go get a receiver because we ain't got a second receiver. You see what I mean? Um, C.D. Lamb is fantastic, but he's better because he has Michael Gallup and Amari Cooper to be one and two guy. So, no, I do not have any trade ideas for Jamal Adams. Let's just wait around and get him for free and then pay him. So on Patreon, we got Tyler the Scout, and I see his last name is Pistoia, but that that's French for the Scout. So Tyler the Scout, he says, uh, your favorite type of running play from when you A, played offensive line, B, played running back, or C, uh, that you see currently in the National Football League? Well, I didn't play running back. I was too fat, uh, but I did play offensive line, and my favorite plays to block for were, uh, were counter plays. Right. I love counter plays because I looked at my offensive line like Voltron. Right. So counter plays is when the front side. So we're going to run right. Our front side is our, you know, is, is the is the right side. So the right side of our offensive line will block down. So that would be blocking the opposite way. So I'm basically getting the hell out of the way. So somebody backside can pull and smoke somebody front side. Right now, when done properly, uh, you know, it creates this hole between where the pulling guard hits the end and where the right tackle blocks down at. You know what I mean? I should probably draw this somewhere. But my favorite plays to uh, to run were plays where I had the opportunity to block down. Blocking down was my favorite kind of block because if it was a one take here, my blocking down steps, it was flat down the line of scrimmage. So if they were coming upfield and a guard disappears, they see the guard disappearing, but they don't see me about to hit them flat sideways. So I was able to get some good hits on that. Um, now that I, you know, I've gotten into the coaching and analysis game or whatever, um, I like inside zone. I love inside zone. Um, it's so many ways to run it. You know, you can do read option or you don't have to read the backside in at all. You know, you could just zone run the damn thing. Um, and I like it because for every formation that a that a that a defense gives you inside zone looks different. And just on a technical football nerd nuance side of it, um, to be able to get four different run, five different run plays from for five different fronts is just interesting. And even when I was playing center, just being able to you know diagnose it on the go, it was a really fun challenge. So there's your answer, sir. Goblo from YouTube, he says, uh, rookies to keep an eye on other than CeeDee Lamb. She is CeeDee Lamb, but you didn't ask for that. So um, I think Trevon Diggs can, can possibly come in and fight for a nickel spot. And he may be one of the more talented cornerbacks that we got on this team right now. Now, he's very raw, so his technique may put him in a situation where other guys might be better than him day one. But I think in terms of skill, I do think Trevon Diggs uh, has an opportunity to be to be pretty top tier fantastic at this uh, at this thing that we that we call a cornerback. Um, and I always talk about when we talk about these rookies making the team, what's the path of least resistance? So we got this uh, free agent fullback named uh, Shea Wu Aloni Lua uh, from from um, TCU. And his path is incredibly easy. All he got to do is come in and be better than Jameis Olawale. And just based on what I've seen from the film, Shea Wu is a better runner than Jameis. He's a better catcher. I got to see more from his blocking, but that's what training camp will be about. But I just think you can do a lot more things with Shea Wu than Jameis Olawale. Um, 
and it's interesting because if you think about what Green Bay would like, how they would work John Coon, right? They'll throw some passes to him. Um, they'll 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 run some with him. You know what I mean? They'll they'll just do whatever they got to do to get him involved. But it wasn't like an always involved thing. It was just kind of a catch you slipping involved thing. And I like catching people slipping. So uh, if I can get the most dynamic running back I can get, then give me the undrafted free agent from TCU, Shea Wooloney Lua. Brandon from YouTube has a question. He says, uh, linebackers question, what do you think about the Cowboys going into camp with less than 10 off-the-ball linebackers for the first time since Rob Bryant? They currently have seven. Hey, man, change is good. Change is going to come. And uh, I feel like they got more than seven. I feel like they got more than seven. Um, so you got Vanderess, Jalen Smith, Sean Lee, March Lillard. You got Joe Thomas, uh, Luke Gifford, uh, my man's from, what's the name, from Seattle, uh, Malcolm that came over. Uh, Francis Bernard, the undrafted kid that we got from Utah. Um, Azur Kamara, uh, the undrafted kid that we got from Kansas. Man, we got a lot of linebackers, man. <laughs> what, what do you mean? What, what? We got guys. We got guys. But at the end of the day, those guys are going to be more for a kicking game anyway. You know, Because to be fair, if we run mostly nickel, I really don't need 10 linebackers. I don't need 10 off the ball linebackers. And it may be like a philosophy thing. Plus, we got nine guys now. Hey, who's to say that we won't just bring in a, bring in an extra guy for a training camp? So there's still time. Uh, we may have less than 10. We may have more than 10. I don't know. But it just kind of depends on who makes the team or not. But uh, I'm good with the linebacker guys that we got because if anything happens to any of them, I feel good about Joe Thomas. I feel pretty solid about Luke Gifford. We'll see if he can continue uh, to improve on his um, freshman campaign. And, you know, we got the guys up top, so I'm not I'm not worried about linebacker. Plus, your linebackers would be really good if your D linemen were better. And it just happens that our D linemen, especially the two interior guys, are better. Brandon from Frankly Football, he asked me this in my Discord. Y'all go check my Discord out. I never ran Discord at first because I couldn't do too many things on my laptop at one time because my laptop was trash. Um, but I got some new some new technology that's allowing me to keep Discord up. So I'll be in Discord a lot more than I used to be. Uh, so that link is in the description. Y'all can check that out and go follow it. But Brandon from Brandon from Frankly Football goes by Mooseville there. And he says, uh, Vach, what are you... Um, what are things that this coaching staff are looking for in the cornerback position battle? Um, I think they're looking for length. They're looking for aggression. They're looking for people to make plays on the ball and maintain coverage. That's easy peasy. I think that's any that's any cornerback conversation. Um, now we don't know what they're looking for specifically. All we have is you know is just some assumptions. We just have some projections on what the cornerback position for the two thousand and twenty Dallas Cowboys are going to be like. So we don't really have answers, but. Um, Based on the clues of the investigation, we think that we're going to be an aggressive press man cover team. So the best press man cover guy and the guy that gets the hands on the most football, the guys that can you know produce turnovers and things like that, I would imagine that that has a lot to uh, that that would have a big role in our cornerback evaluation. Georgia Barber from my YouTube comment section was like, uh, only thing I wish you spoke on is if you think it was smart to let Randall Cobb go because we did replace him with C.D. Lamb. Great blog though, or great blog Thursday. Um, <laughs> that's probably though, uh, you know, man, think about Randall Cobb is I would love for Randall Cobb to be here, but Randall Cobb is off in, um, Houston making $9 million. We couldn't afford to pay Randall Cobb $9 million. When he's on the Cowboys making 4.9, that's, a, that's a totally different number. Um, but let Randall Cobb get his money. I'm not hating on him, but I think Randall Cobb not being here made it even much easier for us to get CeeDee Lamb. I just think that was uh, that just kind of made the conversation a lot more a lot more concrete, a lot more easier to have. But I think CeeDee Lamb is even to a little better than Randall Cobb right now. I think we can do a lot more things with CeeDee Lamb. Plus, um, I think that CeeDee Lamb will project to be the best receiver on this team at some point in two or three years or so. That's just my opinion there. Uh, you know, people people often forget that Randall Cobb was like 5'10", and he played outside just because they put him outside. They don't necessarily meant that he that he fit outside. I'm talking about the Green Bay. Um, so we thought that he was going to bring some of that outside play to us, and, you know, he didn't. His size just 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 didn't add up. What you get from C.D. Lamb is that you get somebody with some real size and length who can play inside and outside. Um, Randall Cobb may be a better route runner than than C.D. Lamb, but C.D. Lamb got a little more 
Got a little more bop in him now, I would say. Um, Randall Cobb has spurts of being a yak guy. CeeDee Lamb is a yak guy on, on every single play. Randall Cobb got hurt. CeeDee Lamb seems to be durable. Um, even though Cobb wasn't hurt very long, but the last few years of him being in the league, he was hurt. So I do think that we get more durability with Lamb. Um, plus, Randall Cobb has some drops. And I don't think CeeDee Lamb drops the football in those situations because he got some of the best hands in, in college football. And I, I expect that to fully... Um, translate over so you know absolutely I think we we get better this year with CD if anything we even out if anything we even out this year with CD Lamb and we was a if we was a top offense with Randall Cobb and we keep the we keep the um, the nickel spot slot spot simple we keep that even or whatever then we even out but if Lamb ends up being better than Cobb which I will I, I, I do think he will be um, if he ends up better than Cobb in the long run, then of course we made a better long-term decision. Plus we can put Coop in the slot now. Moving on. Nova Legion in the, what's this, Discord? In the Discord he says, Vach, prediction on the, the D-line's ability to stop the run this year. I think it's gonna all depend on Dontari Poe. Um, because Gerald McCoy is 280 now, so I think he's prepping himself to be more of a pass rusher. And to be fair, he may put some pounds back on and end up like 290 or so. But I looked at what Gerald McCoy is size-wise, and I think about how Aaron Donald plays, right? Uh, I'm not making a direct comparison, but Aaron Donald is not a gangster in the run game. But when the Rams were really good, Aaron Donald wasn't really asked to be a gangster in the run game. That was Ndamukong Sue's job, right? But you notice when Ndamukong Sue goes away, now Aaron Donald has a lot more responsibilities inside. So Aaron Donald t seems to have a slower year in run production, right? Um... But I think Aaron Donald, in, like Aaron Donald puts the, puts the nipple on the titty because he got 20 sacks. Like that's what makes Aaron Donald special, what he does in the passing game. So in Gerald McCoy, if Gerald McCoy's, um, if his weight is going to be what Duntari Poe is holding and Gerald McCoy gives you value as a pass rusher or gives you value in one-on-one in um, in -on -one situations, then then it's going to be important that Duntari Poe takes those double team blocks to not only let Gerald McCoy and D-Law and his right defensive end run more free, uh, but to let those guys get one-on-one -on -one blocks. But also we need our linebackers to be a lot more clean. So if our linebackers get to run clean, then good. I think we totally upgrade the one-tech position because the guy that started one-tech for us last year is the second one-tech now. He's the backup, Antoine Woods. And Antoine Woods ain't bad. It's just that when you take him who was once a starter and make him the rotational guy, I just think you just get better as a defense. So it's going to be not necessarily the D tackles making the run stops. Uh, it will sometimes, but I think, you know, the D tackles are going to make, or at least the one tech is going to make the three tech have a more fun time. Our defensive ends have a more fun time and our linebackers get the party a little bit. Ryokoshe in my Discord, y'all go follow that. Uh, he says, uh, can I do a comparison on Joe Thomas and Travis Frederick? Also, what are we looking for in our young guys gunning for the job at center? Um, I'll tell you what, and let me and you know, let me know if I'm saying your name right. But uh, Ryokoshe, I don't know. But so Joe Looney did a very serviceable job, right? He got in there and he snapped the football and he was a very hat on hat guy and he got it done. I'm gonna compare Joe Looney to Travis Frederick in his prime. So Travis got a lot more movement. Travis got to second to a uh, second level a little better. Um, Joe was really good with his movement on the line of scrimmage. So if Joe is at center and the guard is engaged with a with a tackle, Joe was really good moving laterally to take over that block so that the guard can get to the next level. But uh, Travis was really good at angles and cutting off linebackers on the next level. Uh, Joe is really good on screens. Travis is as well, but Joe is really good on like open field stuff where like Joe just get the Joe gets to be athletic. But um, and Joe is cool with lining people up, so I don't really hate that neither. But the one thing about Joe is he plays center, and at center you can hide people um, to where if there's a one tech giving you problems, you can tap that corresponding guard uh, on the shoulder and be like, hey, help me out here, and you'll get help. But uh, versus the Rams and versus the Colts, what you notice is that they have two really good defensive tackles. So what will happen is 
the other guard will be engaged with that tackle so they couldn't help Joe Looney. And Joe would have to get into a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations with these with these nose guys. So if you go back and watch the Rams game, hey man, Joe Looney was cool all year, man. I ain't had no problems with Joe Looney. But then Indomitian Sue picked his ass up and put him on top of Zeke, and it just made my neck hurt watching it. What I think the difference between Joe and Travis is that Travis was a lot more powerful in his prime. And I like that about our new centers, Connor McGovern and uh, Tyler Badass, right? When you watch their film in college, uh, Tyler, Tyler at Wisconsin and, um, you know, McGovern at Penn State, uh, his sophomore year when he, when, he, when he played 14 games at, at center, like when you watch them, they play with a lot of power. They're powerful guys. And a lot of, there, there aren't a lot of powerful, center, powerful centers in the league. You know what I mean? So what we have is we got two guys that can interchange and be strong there. And they know the offense. They know the offense because, one, Tyler's a really smart guy. And um, the thing about Connor McGovern is that he's been in this system for a whole year now. He has a whole, he, he has a whole off season and he's in his man body right now. So um, I think Connor McGovern's good to go. So I think, first of all, we get power at those spots. We have intelligence, of course, sure. Um, but I just think it just depends on who's ready to play day one. And I'm not sure if Tyler's going to be ready to play day one because he hadn't had an offseason get into his man body yet. Now, can you hide Tyler? Sure, you can hide him within that offensive line and let him combo. But if he's in a situation where we got to play two good defensive tackles and he's, and he's on his own, can he hang on his own? So I think that's going to be interesting. Plus, we can also run away from that side. We, we, can, we can get rid of the ball quickly. It's a lot of things that we can do to make Tyler more comfortable. So it'll either be Tyler at center, McGovern battling Williams for left guard, um, or it'll be Tyler chilling until he can get stronger, uh, McGovern at center, and Williams at left guard. One day, I think it's going to be badass at center, McGovern at left guard, Connor Williams playing left tackle. That's what I think the long-term answer is going to be. JR in my Discord was like, uh, Vach, does Lamb have a shot of taking over at wide receiver too? I don't think so, but I've heard some people say that he will. I think at some point, CeeDee Lamb's going to be the best receiver on his team. Like, all together. Um, he, 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 I think Lamb and Cooper are, are going to be doing the 1A, 1B dance, but... I don't think that's a reason to push Michael Gallup off a bridge, though. Like, I really believe in, in, in what Michael Gallup can do. And there will be a Michael Gallup film session for, for people that got Michael Gallup all the way messed up. Uh, it might be it might be out by now by the time by the time this comes out. I don't know. Y'all y'all um, y'all uh, check and see. But um, will he be wide receiver two this year? I don't know. I think I think we're in a good place with CeeDee Lamb in the slot because Gallup got two more years. Coop got five, but it's only two guaranteed. And Lamb got five years on his on his rookie contract. So if we could just smoke people with Lamb at, at slot for three years, then let's just do that. There's no need to move guys around. Even if he's better than Gallup, I think Gallup is better outside. Lamb just got the versatility to, to just do anything. So if Gallup gets hurt, you can put Lamb at your second receiver spot. But when Gallup comes back, you put Lamb right back in slot and you let you know, Gallup do flanker work or, you know, whatever you, you know, whatever you got him doing. I just think we need to just find ways to get all three guys on the field and just let them all, you know, let them all exist in whatever spot that they're most comfortable in. And I think that's um, Coop and Gallup outside Lamb in the slot. We may get some different developments between now and training camp, but we'll see. Also, we get to put Coop in slot. Anime Dolphin said, and it's a real good question. He says, what will you do with your channel if football doesn't exist this year? That's a great question. I think football is in good hands, but if we don't have football, then I'll just be doing my Vach's voice content. You know, uh, y'all know I've been I've been trying to do this this second YouTube channel for the longest now. And I think I'm finally in a in a in a, in a good little groove to do that. Uh, that, the podcast, and you know, just other little different things streaming wise. I mean, we're gonna have like news. You know, we'll we'll find a way to figure this thing. At the end of the day, I'm a hustler, you know what I mean? I'm a hustler, and even though I think we'll have football, um, we'll have football. But um, I'll find a way to put some to put some content out. So I got a plan just in case it it does happen. So, but that's a great question though. Hold my beer in my Patreon. I also think my last question was from my Patreon as well. So shout out to my to my Patreon people. Salute to y'all. Um, Hold my beer for me. He says, uh, how did you become a cowboy fan? And he puts a little goat at the end. I appreciate you, sir, for your kind words. Um, 
I'll tell you what, my whole family's a Cowboy fan, and I was kind of drafted into it, but I was going to be a rebel, right? I was going to hold it down on my own. I ain't going to be a Cowboy fan just because y'all want me to be one. You know what I'm saying? I was like, man, look, I'm I'm about to go do some research, man. I'm about to go figure out whatever team won the Super Bowl the year I was born, I'm going to be a fan of that team. That's how we're going to hold it down. And uh, I was born in uh, 1992, and sure enough, you know what I mean? So uh, that's a couple angles of me being a Cowboy fan. I was drafted into it because of the family. Um, plus, they won the Super Bowl the year I was born. So that's why I'm a Cowboy fan. Great question. Enemy Michael, he probably dropped this in the... That looks like YouTube. That's YouTube? Yeah, it's probably YouTube. Yeah. He says, uh, is Gerald McCoy and um, and Duntari Poe an upgrade in the interior considering past interior players? Absolutely. And I say that because, you know, the guy that started, and I said this earlier, but the guy that started at one tech last year is the backup now, right? And, and Malik Collins, I think Gerald McCoy is better than Malik Collins already. So, um, what, so what we're looking at now is the depth of things. So, you know, Michael Bennett being a being a rotational three tech guy that could play you know DN sometimes. Um, Kerry Hyder, how much weight does he hold for you? You know, to where this year we get Tyrone Crawford back, in which I think a lot of our um, run game woes came from Tyrone Crawford not being around. Um, also, we get uh, we get to see Neville Gallimore and Tristan Hill take uh, take 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 one more step. I'm not ready to cancel Tristan Hill. I'm ready to see what he does with the off season up under his belt, and we'll cross that road whenever we get there. So this year at three tech is still a question mark, but I do think we will be better than we were last year. And the last question from uh, my man Taylor. Appreciate you, Taylor. Salute to you, my guy. He asked this on the Twitter machine. He says, uh, "Who do you think is going to be 2020's Tony Pollard, the guy, uh, the guy who shines the most when given opportunities?" Shit, I hope it's Tony Pollard. You know what I mean? I've given my three running back theory um, a few times on a few different videos, so I won't do it again here. But um, I think Tony Pollard is going to get more opportunities because this is, is going to be his sophomore campaign. I think the offense is going to be a little more dynamic. I think we're going to be looking at mismatches a lot more. Um, plus, I think McCarthy is a little less married to Zeke than Jason is. So I think Zeke is going to get his carries. Don't get me wrong, but I think it's it's uh, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of work for, uh, for Tony Pollard to have. So Tony's going to get his carries. I also think Tony's going to get some catches. So... Yeah, yeah, Tony Pollard is going to be this year's Tony Pollard, but he's going to be a better version of Tony Pollard. But, hey, man. Yeah, that's my last one. Hey, I appreciate y'all for tuning in, man. I appreciate y'all for asking the questions. Uh, I'm probably going to do this. It may be a once a month thing, man. Every I, I, I don't know. I don't know the frequency in which we'll do this. It may be if I don't have a video schedule, we'll just throw up a Q and A and answer answer some some questions or whatever. I don't know, but uh, hey, I appreciate y'all for tuning in, like the video and all that good stuff. Y'all hold it down for the Doski Woski and the Peaski Whiskey. The YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing on my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.